you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thanks, we got lots of stuff coming up. Hello and welcome to Innis. Hello and welcome. This is Say With Your Legs Media. My name is Innis Luby and uh, welcome, 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 welcome. So as you see in the thumbnail, a lot of stuff going in, going on in the world of pro cycling and it looks like 2024 is going to be epic, amazing and exciting. So really, really looking forward to what's coming up for 2024. But in the meantime, we need to you know find out what's going to happen. Uh, in the coming months with riders going here and there and teams merging and exploding and imploding and doing all types of stuff so let's get into it let's uh just let's get right to it so we know about Jonas Sapp and Roglic had an amazing uh La Volta and uh <laughs> it looks like they reluctantly uh guided Sapp Kuz to the win and uh, they didn't want to do it I'm gonna say it. it looked like to me they didn't they didn't want to and they were just like responding to the outcry from the fans and the media and it, So yeah, they just had to respond simples. So uh, Jonas, I mean Jonas Sapkus got his um uh, His win his stage is like his tour win and um, he's not interested in doing it again He likes the role that he plays and uh, voila there it is Sapkus Jonas and Roglic. So it's, it's going to be interesting because uh, as you can see, uh, there's transfer news in, in the making. Uh, Roglic says he, he wants to go. It's because he doesn't see him having any real role in trying to win the Tour de France if Jonas and, and um, Remco is in the same place. So you got Remco Abinapool who, who seems like he's okay. Uh, well, we haven't heard anything because he says what he says. And uh, we haven't heard anything, but it seems like he's okay uh, with the merger, and and him as Jonas as teammates, it could be pretty pretty awesome. So that's crazy because now you're gonna have uh, Walt Wenat, uh, the guy that they're both from the same country, Walt Wenat and Remco Evenepoel, both from Belgium, and a few years ago they were at odds at the World Championships because Remco was doing his own thing and wasn't riding to team orders. And uh, Ramco was speaking his mind, so now they're gonna the same national team, and now they're gonna be under the same um, pro team. So let's see how that works out. So let's get to Mark Cavendish. So big up to Mark Cavendish, who will be, who will be uh, uh, continuing. He's not quitting uh, the uh, scene just as yet. So he was going to retire if he got the racket, if he broke the racket, like uh, like more wins, more stage wins at the Tour de France than Eddie Merckx. But he, he, you know, unfortunately, he had a crash and he was unable to continue with this year's uh, Tour de France. And this year's Tour de France was ridiculously hard. Uh, it, was, it was crazy amount of climbing, and yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know they want to see the big boys compete it out, but then they do that, and then they make the race so tough and so hard it just excludes all the other like riders and and their specialties, whether it be time trial, whether it be you know breakaway specialists on the flats or you know sprinters like mark cavendish so you you yeah you you i just i just thought like this year's tour de france was one-sided it was it was uh geared to you know it was an exciting tour de france but it just was one-sided you, ju you just didn't get to see the other riders really really shine even though they had a couple stages to sprint and stuff it just wasn't the same it just didn't feel as balanced it just felt like they were just putting putting stuff in place so that the big the big the, the big climber guys could couldn't go at it so that's that's that. Uh, let's get into my man Peter Sagan. So what's what's about Peter Sagan? Peter Sagan is probably one of the most talented and exciting riders that, to come along inside of uh, pro cycling. In his early earlier in his career, there were some doubts, and he wasn't really producing the results. And people were like saying like like this guy can't do what he needs to do. And then all of a sudden he started off winning like with the tour of california and then he just went on to just do some amazing stuff so let's 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 read up uh peters again concludes an illustrious road racing career with a nice ninth place finish ninth place finish at the tour de vendee that was just uh this weekend gone so cycling icon, cycling icon peter sagan has ended his remarkable road racing journey with a nice ninth place finish at the tour de vendee making 
The final chapter of a career boasting 121 victories, including three consecutive world championships. Only rider to ever do that. No, I, I shouldn't say that. I think one other rider did it, but I can't remember. But um, <laughs> including three uh, consecutive world championships and seven Tour de France green jerseys. Sagan now transitions to mountain bike racing, aiming to represent Slovakia at the Paris 2024 Olympics. Peter Sagan signed off his leg le legendary career on the road with a ninth place finish at the Tour de Vendy on Sunday with a... Uh, with the Slovakian now shifting his focus uh, to a swan song on the mountain bike finish to his career. The 33-year-old, 33, 33 one of the finest cyclists of his generation, bows out with a remarkable tally of 121 victories, including three consecutive world championships from 2015 to 2017. He also has 12 stage wins to his name with the Tour de France, where he also won the green jersey a racket seven times. And our counts and our countless victories, uh, victories at the Tour de Flanders in 2016, uh, Paris Roubaix in 2018, uh, and just many, many more. And it goes on to say, Sagan is a trailblazer. Sagan stood out as a versatile rider with impressive, impressive athleticism and individuality uh, during his prime in in the 2010s. He will now focus on mountain bike racing and will join the specialized factory racing team. He is a former junior world European champion in the discipline, having completed, having competed in mountain bike, having competed in a mountain bike event in Rio in 20, 2016 Olympics, finishing 35th. Sagan is keen to make a farewell appearance at the Paris 2024 Olympics. So we gotta say uh hats off to Peter Sagan and uh farewell to like we're on a world racing scene, so he's still gonna be around. And he's going to be doing a few uh, uh, mountain bike races coming up. So he might even do some cycle. We might even see him do some cycle cross, maybe in his home country or whatnot. So, and uh, we just got to look out for him and uh, good luck to him. And I can't wait to see him at the 2024 Olympics in Paris. It's pretty close to me. Um, will I be in Paris? I don't know. We will have to see. That's that's like a big event. It's a lot going on. It's a lot of commotion, and uh, my media. My media house is, is tiny in comparison. <laughs> so if I got access to that, that would be uh, totally amazing. So we'll see what happens and uh, we'll just go forward there. Might, might might even be able to get to Paris to just to beat the road race that, you know, that because anybody could go see the road race. You don't need tickets or anything like that. So we'll see. We'll see what's up and we'll see how it goes. So on to the next thing. That was Peter Sagan and uh, the man himself. So next, we're going to talk about Julian Alaphilippe. So Julian, Julian Alaphilippe, this man is, he is like, he is a, the quintessential uh, Frenchman. Like just very uh, flamboyant and uh, stylish and just, he's just like the French love him. Just really love his personality. It's out there. He's, he's always you know, he, he, he speaks his mind, he's not over the top, and he's just a really, you know, classy type of guy. And he when he comes to race, he comes to race, he doesn't play. So that's why people love uh, Julian Alaphilippe so far. I mean, why they do love him. So anyway, the headline says, Julian Alaphilippe admits uh, Visma Sudal quick step. Rumors are sad, but insists riders are not going to cry. So let's, let's, let's dive into that. Let's See what he says. He says the the Visma Sudel rumors are still the hot topic in the peloton with the French star Julien Alaphilippe bemoaning the, the potential loss of Sudel Quickstep as a standalone team. It is thought the team could form as early as 2024. Alaphilippe will boast six stage wins at the Tour de France and two rainbow jerseys from, world, from the Royal Road Race was speaking to Eurosport at the Copa uh, what's that, Bonucci in Italy. Julian Alaphilippe of Sudel Quickstep admits widespread reports of his team are looming, looming of his team's looming merger with Jumbo Visma are sad, but insisted the riders are not going to cry. The team, the two teams, are reportedly discussing about the potential merger as soon as 2024, meaning the likes of Alaphilippe, Remco Evenepoel, could uh, ride alongside Tour de France champion Jonas Vingegaard next season under the new Visma Visma Sudel brand. Speaking to Eurosport ahead of the Copa 
for what's that? Bonici, bon, Bonucci, uh, Ale Philippe said riders were in the dark over the merger and were waiting for good news. We don't know much about it, but it's a complicate. It's complicated in everyone's mind. So it's um. So we're trying to stay focused on what we have to uh, do. What we have to do in the race, he said. We hope the situation will unlock when we. We hope the situation will unlock when we have news because it's a bit annoying. Your sports uh, expert, uh, Philippe, Philippe Gilbert, has warned of, a catas of catastrophic consequences should the mer merger go ahead. While former UCI president uh, Brian Cookson has claimed it's not a good idea, it's, it's sad above all. It's not a good idea. It's sad above all. Okay, yeah, he doesn't think it's a good idea. Uh, so that quick step has been a team for many years and at the heart of cycling with a, with a history behind it all, Alaphilippe continued. I find it sad, but we're, we're not there yet. We're not going to cry. We're here to race and we, we're waiting for good news and we hope we don't know. Uh, we, oh, we, all, we all hope we don't know anything, but look, there you go. So, so yeah, um, did he go on to say, he says, uh, any merger will likely, would likely see a number of riders uh, scrambling for a seat in the peloton with the UCI capping squad to 30 riders. Jumbo Visma currently have 26 riders under contract with Sudal Quickstep have 23 per cycling stats, uh, the website's per cycling stats. One rider who will be involved in the, who would not be involved in the merger is Primoz Roglic, who confirmed he will leave Jumbo Visma on Saturday, the Slovenian and three-time Volta champion and winner of the Giro d'Italia in May is poised to sign a bumper six million deal over three seasons. Uh, sh um, let me see. So, it just says he's going to sign a deal, but with who? With who? Uh, that's going to be the big question. Here he is. And what? The Roglic transfer. So it's saying that he's going to be signed like signing a six million deal, six million uh is a pound euro, probably not dollar deal to to transfer to a new team. But do Bora Hansgrove have that type of budget? We know Ineos does, and I I, I have a feeling that that, that you know because Ineos was trying to get a uh, Tadej Pogacar on their team because they need like someone that they, they need a winner they need a Tour de France winner so that the team you know continues to progress and do good things so they can't get Tadej Pogacar because UA, UAE has uh, tons of money so it's no way um, uh, they're going to get Pogacar they're just going to build a team around it, Pogacar to make sure he can compete against Jonas and, and now it's going to be Jonas and now it's going to be Roglic and we don't know about Ramco. Ramco is going to be like a, you know, a, so Jonas is going to have two super domestiques for the Tour de France. That's if Walt Reinhardt and Ramco go to the Tour de France. So that's going to be, that's going to be interesting. He's going to have like some, some just major firepower for lieutenants. And so if Roglic goes to Ineos, it's going to be a big look. It's going to be a good look, a big look for Ineos. And Ineos definitely uh, needs needs uh, a, a Primoz Roglic to uh, be able to compete and uh, go after. And 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 you're gonna have Filippo Ghana. He's gonna steal. Okay, he loses Walt Wenard as someone to pull and take care of him. But then he picks up a uh, Filippo Ghana and a few other the other um, the other Ineos riders. But the crazy thing is Ineos. They are doing some um, reshuffling as well because I tell Guggenhardt, he was like, he's like a rider that's riding for Ineos and he won the Giro d'Italia and it looks like he won't be riding for them next season. So we have to look out to see which team that Arteo is going to be dropping on or he's going to be riding for because he had a bit of an injury, put him out for a little while and um, looks like he's uh, taking, making a slow comeback, but he'll be back. And we're going to have to see which team he's going to be on. But at the minute, uh, Roglic. Yeah, at the minute, Roglic is um, going to be riding for either Bora Hansgrove or Ineos. I personally think he's going to be uh, at Ineos. It's going to be a good look for Ineos. Uh, Ineos has the firepower, the people to back him up. It's just going to be a good look for him. So that's that's what I think. And that's where he's going. 
it would be cool if we went to Bar Hunsgrove, but I don't think Bar Hunsgrove has the support that he would like like in order to, you know to give him a fighting chance at winning the tour at winning the Giro because he, you're definitely going to need some really solid people behind you and having a Felipe Gana behind you, man, you 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 stand a big chance to do some great things. So that's about it for today. That's all my stuff for today we talked about peter sagan big up to peter sagan and uh oh oh my goodness it's just the season is looking it's building up to be a really spectacular one so really looking forward to kev you know getting the record at the tour de france being the outright leader and holder of the uh, uh of everything and all of, of being the outright leader and most wins at the tour de france and so he would surpass uh, Eddie Merckx, whether he gets one win or two wins. If he gets a win and just like said, I'm done. Or if he just goes for it and he just goes on a tear and ends up winning like five stages. But the boy is still fast. The boy is still fast. Make no mistake. So that's about it for today. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we're going to uh, see if we can bring you some some uh, a reaction to Corey, uh, he is what on Instagram. Check him out on Instagram. The nation's number one beast. And how he won with the crit, crit, like the criterium in Redlands, the Redlands Classic, and how he uh you know got his team to to uh, focus around and do the things so he could win the stage race. It's, it's interesting because a lot of the things that Corey is saying in uh, his video is stuff that I've been talking about. And if uh, the U.S. guys improve upon it, the criterium scene criterium scene will go. It it, it will just uh you know take leaps and bounds in its you know. The way the guys race, the results they get, the competitiveness, it, it'll just be way more exciting. And I'm pretty sure sponsors will put more money into the sport as well. But anyway, that's me. Let's go back to the big screen. Let's 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 be out of here and then say thank you all for tuning in. I definitely appreciate you. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we will see you on Friday for Cycling Talk. like button subscribe to the channel thanks we got lots of stuff coming up like i said thank you for subs thank you for watching please hit the like button subscribe to the channel it helps out so much peace out until next time